Good morning, sons and daughters of God. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome to our worship service for this, the third Sunday of Easter. It's good to be back with you through the wonder of technology. And I hope you had the opportunity to worship with our Synod staff last week. I'm glad that I had an opportunity to take a little time and go up and visit with my dad. It was good to be with him for a few days, but I'm glad to be back with you here this morning. We will continue to share these services each week, and I know it's not the same thing as being here together, but uh, so many of you have told me how you are sharing these services with your family and friends, and even um, people all across the world, literally, are tuning in to our, our worship services. And I'm very grateful that we have the opportunity to share uh, this worship with so many folks so far away. Today, our service will begin with the Thanksgiving for baptism. And so you might want to pause this just a moment and go and collect a, a small bowl of water to have handy. And uh, that way, when we do the Thanksgiving, you, I will invite you to let your fingers feel the water uh, as a sign of God's presence and love here as we worship together. Also, I would invite you to light a candle as another sign of Christ's presence, transforming the space that you were doing something else a little while ago, now transforming that into a place of worship. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God. For in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, 
you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together. O God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of the bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for this morning is from the book of Acts. Today's reading is the conclusion of Peter's sermon preached following the giving of the Holy Spirit to the apostles on the day of Pentecost. The center of his preaching is the bold declaration that God has made the crucified Jesus both Lord and Christ. A reading from Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when the crowd heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. The second reading is from the letter of 1 Peter. The imagery of exile is used to help the readers of this letter understand that they are strangers in a strange land. Christians no longer belong to this age. Through the death of Christ, we belong to God, so that our focus, faith, and hope are no longer on such things as silver or gold. A reading from 1 Peter. If you invoke as father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, 
through the living and enduring Word of God. Word of God, Word of life. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to Luke. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. As they walked along, they were talking about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. But God kept them from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing so intently as you walk along? They stopped short, sadness written across their faces. Then one of them, Cleopas, replied, You must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that have happened there these last few days. What things? Jesus asked. The things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth, they said. He was a prophet who did powerful miracles. And he was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. But our leading priests and other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death. And they crucified him. We had hoped he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. All this happened three days ago. Then some women from our group of his followers were at his tomb early this morning, and they came back with an amazing report. They said his body was missing, and they had seen angels who told them Jesus is alive. Some of our men ran out to see, and sure enough, his body was gone, just as the women had said. Then Jesus said to them, You foolish people, you find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures. Wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his glory? Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself. By this time, they were nearing Emmaus and at the end of their journey. Jesus acted as if he were going on, but they begged him, Stay the night with us, since it is getting late. So he went home with them. As they sat down to eat, he took the bread and blessed it. Then he broke it and gave it to them. Suddenly their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And at that moment, he disappeared. They said to each other, Didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? And within the hour, they were on their way back to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven disciples and the others who had gathered with them, who said, The Lord has risen. He appeared to Peter. Then the two from Emmaus told their story of how Jesus had appeared to them as they were walking along the road and how they had recognized him as he was breaking the bread. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace is yours from our risen Christ. Amen. Today, April 26th, is an important date in history because of another pandemic. Only in this case, the disease that folks were dealing with was nothing new. It has been around for centuries. In 1916, New York City experienced a terrible outbreak of the disease. Thousands were affected. Hundreds died. 
The city tried to stem the tide of the outbreak with things that sound very familiar to us today. Quarantines. Public places being closed. Public activities fell silent all across the city. Treatment centers opened and lots of remedies and preventative measures were tried by all the frightened population. Because of the persistence of the disease, there was an, uh, an ongoing uh, attempt by researchers to find a vaccine. And in 1935, one was developed. Only it proved to be quite ineffective and dangerous to certain populations. But on April 26, 1954, a new vaccination effort was started in McLean, Virginia. And ultimately, 1.8 million children were vaccinated across the country with this new drug. A year later, the vaccine was declared to be safe and effective in the battle against polio. Only it wasn't. It wasn't safe. And in 1955, vaccinations were suspended because of several deaths and hundreds of paralysis, cases of paralysis in vaccinated patients. But the good news is, is that by 1960, an effective vaccine was developed. And although not totally, global efforts to end polio have largely proven successful. So April 26th marks an important milestone in the efforts to fight a frightening and deadly virus. As we continue to keep this public space closed due to a frightening virus, I thought about the others who have dealt with pandemics in the past, and, and they must have had great times of hope and also times of great disappointment. Hope for a vaccine and disappointment when it didn't work. And except for those whose lives had been tragically touched directly by the disease, disappointment meant that you had to keep going even when your hopes were dashed. And the fact is, that describes most all of us. Not everyone has had a serious tragedy, but everyone knows about disappointment. And no doubt, so did Cleopas and his friend. They're traveling back home after the events of the weekend in Jerusalem. When a stranger meets them, it's Jesus, but they don't know him. They don't recognize him. And disappointment can do that to you. It can, it can blur your vision. It can sometimes cloud everything around us and even affect our relationship with God. The stranger wants to know what they're talking about. And they stop. What? You mean you don't know? You haven't heard? And they went on to share the news of Jesus' crucifixion. And then they shared their disappointment. We had hoped. We had hoped. Aren't those just the saddest words? So much is said in those words. They, they speak of a future that will not be. A dream that will not materialize. A promise that proved to be false. How many of us are dealing with our disappointments these days? We had hoped there would be a wedding. We had hoped there'd been a graduation. 
We had hoped to expand our business. And certainly our list of disappointments go far beyond what's happening with the pandemic. I had hoped the relationship would work out. I had hoped the kids would have stayed out of trouble. I had hoped this job would be the one for me. I had hoped that so many things would fall into place, would turn out okay, would be the way we had planned. But for one reason or another, hopes and dreams and expectations fall short or fall apart, and we are left with that empty feeling of disappointment. Sometimes disappointments can alter the course of our life. And sometimes disappointments are merely an inconvenience and an annoyance. But we all know what it feels like to, to have to drag out of ourselves out of bed in the morning knowing that life goes on. Life is not threatened by what we had, has happened to us. But life doesn't go the way we had hoped and planned. We had hoped. But. Cleopas continued. We heard about what the women had said, but we're not sure. That's right, you get fooled once, you... You get cautious, but if you get fooled badly enough, if you get burned badly enough, then we begin to put up walls. We start to, to get cynical. And so Cleopas and his friend were walking away from Jerusalem, away from their disappointment. And that's one way of dealing with it, just trying to walk away from it. But the story doesn't end there, obviously. If we fast forward to the end, we find the two of them racing back toward Jerusalem. What would cause them to change direction so dramatically? Luke tells us it's Jesus, the risen Christ. He helps them deal with their disappointment. He offers them a remedy for their heartache. And the story tells us that he gave them scripture. Jesus helps them understand that God is in the pain and that God is faithful. He gave them food. He took bread. He blessed it. He broke it. And he gave it. And when they received that, that gave them the courage to then return back to the community to be with the others and celebrate new life. Jesus gave them what they needed most. The story of God, the meal of God, the community of God. Can you think of anything that describes? It sounds like to me that it describes church. One of the blessings that come with the church that Christ created is that it helps us to deal with our disappointments, even our despair. Now, the story doesn't tell us that if we are part of a church, then we're never going to be disappointed again. And no, the church is not perfect. Oftentimes, we even get disappointed in the church itself. But this story tells us that Christ is with us and will renew us again, and does so at least in part through word and meal and community. Yet today, one of our disappointments is that this doesn't feel very much like church. Even though we're sharing this word through 
our virtual worship, through Zoom Bible studies. We are not gathered as a community. And we have been fasting from the meal. We had hoped to spend Easter together singing, feasting, feeling close to one another. We had hope. But it's been disappointing. And so maybe that's why this story today is the perfect story for us to hear because it's an Easter story. It's a story telling us that Jesus goes out of his way to show up even when things don't feel right. Telling us that sometimes resurrection takes some time. Take some time to recognize because we've been punched in the gut by things over which we have no control. This story tells us that Jesus shows up the way he always does. And when our hearts burn within us, even in the midst of our disappointments, we can count on Jesus being there with us. Because it's still Easter. And every day is a resurrection day. We can begin to feel Easter when, when, the, when the hopes that we had that were dashed suddenly began to take shape again. When a relationship that was broken begins to be mended. When our loneliness is broken by the hospitality of a friend or a neighbor's call or a grandkid's text, or a Zoom gathering. Resurrection can happen when lives that were falling apart start getting put back together again, piece by piece and bit by bit. This story tells us that God shows up during a quiet evening walk. and We exchange a smile with our neighbor underneath the masks on our faces. Christ is made known around our dinner table and anywhere and everywhere that we make room in the rhythms and the rituals of everyday life. Our hearts can begin to burn within us as we look around and realize just how sacred and how precious life really is. And we can become a sign of new life. We ourselves can be that sign of new life when we help others deal with their disappointments. I love the story that's told about John Scully, who was the president of Pepsi-Cola and one of the fastest rising corporate stars of his day. The story is told about when he was stepping off an elevator in New York City, he was going to meet with Steve Jobs, who was the founder of Apple. Jobs had offered Scully a position with Apple. Now, Scully had resisted taking that job because his salary and perks were far beyond anything that Apple could offer him. But Jobs was persistent, and so the meeting. And it went something like this, Scully says. Well, are you going to come to Apple or not? Steve, I, I love what you're doing here. It excites me, but it doesn't really make any sense. I just don't think I can come to, to be with you at Apple. And he said... Steve's head dropped down and he stared at the pavement for a few minutes. And after a long and, and uncomfortable pause, Jobs issued a challenge to Scully that would haunt him for a long, long time. Steve Jobs says, Do you want to spend the rest of your life just selling sugar water? Or do you want the chance to change the world? My brothers and sisters, there's an awful lot in, in our world that's just sugar water. 
But we have good news. The good news that did change the world. And will keep on changing it as long as our hearts burn to share it. And that change begins when we trade in our we had hoped for the promise of Christ's presence. Things are a lot different these days than we'd hoped they'd be. And I'm sure just like it was before, we're going to have our ups and downs all through this strange time. But those same disciples who hadn't hung around long enough to get the whole story, who were walking away with the we had hope hanging heavy over them, They were going to be the very disciples, the very ones that Christ would choose to usher in the kingdom of God. So even in our disappointments now, even though those disappointments may make it hard for us to see sometimes, new life is here because Christ is here. Christ is with us. So keep on looking for Him. Keep watching for those signs of new life. And be a witness of hope and resurrection. Because it's still Easter. And this is an Easter story that says Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah.
Today we rejoice in the good news that we are joined to Christ in the waters of baptism and raised with him to new life. Therefore, I invite you to affirm your baptism with the Apostles' Creed, the creed by which we baptize. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. God's peace be with you. Peace be with you. God's peace be with you. Peace, peace of Christ, Christ be with you. Praying separately in our homes and together in the Spirit, let us pray for the church, the earth, the world, and all who are in need, responding to each petition with the words, our hearts burn within us. For those whose hearts are fervent with love for your gospel, that they are empowered to tell the story of your love in their lives and to show hospitality in response to this love. Hear us, O God. Our hearts burn within us. For the diverse natural world, for jungles, prairies, forests, valleys, mountains, and for all the wild and endangered animals who call these spaces home, that they are nurtured and protected. Hear us, O oh God. Our hearts burn within us. For broken systems that we have inherited and that we continue to perpetuate, forgive us. Restrain the nations from fighting over limited resources. Redeem us from the cycles of scarcity and violence. Hear us, O oh God. Our hearts burn within us. For all who call upon your healing name, give rest. Stay with us and walk with all who are hungry, friendless, despairing, and desiring healing in, healing in body and spirit, especially Susan Bayman, Jesse Brock, Sam Green, the Holden family, Kay Katz, Jim Myers, Earl Schofield, Mary Lou Schofield, Luray Spaulding, Roger Strong, Nancy Thompson, Ron Wagner, and those held in our hearts or on our lips. Hear us, O oh God. Our hearts burn within us. For the faith-forming ministries of this church, for those who participate in Sunday school, small groups, Bible studies, and other forms of education, guide and inspire learners of every age and ability. Hear us, O oh God. Our hearts burn within us. Create in our hearts a yearning to rest in your promise of eternal and resurrected life. Give us thankful hearts for those who have died, even as we look forward to the hope of new life with you. Hear us, O oh God. Our hearts burn within us. Lastly, for our own personal cares and concerns, hear us as we pray.
Hear us, O God. Our hearts burn within us. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Again, welcome to this day of worship on the third Sunday of Easter. And I wish you well and God's blessings as we continue to remain socially distant but spiritually connected. And I hope that these services are helping you feel connected in the spirit to God's family. Just a couple of reminders about things that are going on. We are continuing to uh, post these uh, services on both Facebook and on YouTube. And uh, we invite you to share those with folks that you may know who don't have the opportunity uh, to uh, have a worship time. Uh, You were sent out this week also um, some daily prayers. Uh, Many of you had talked about how much you enjoyed the Lenten devotions. And so while we continue to be uh, apart, we sent out some daily prayers for you to use, along with readings, daily scripture readings that you may use in your home for your own devotions. We're also holding adult Bible studies. Our adult Sunday school class is being done via Zoom. And uh, if you would like to be a part of that, generally it's on Sunday mornings uh, at 10 o'clock. And if you would like to be a part of that class and that gathering, uh, please let they call the office, notify the office, and we'll send you the link so that you can be a part of that, uh, that continued uh, learning uh, in your home. Also want to thank you for your continued support for Uh, our ministry here. Your offerings have been generous and uh, it is keeping us going, keeping the church going so that we will be here when uh, we all get back here uh, and spend this time together. So we thank you and and invite you to continue that faithful giving. Thank you very much for that. Now hear this assurance of grace. God has always loved you. God loves you now. And God will love you forever. This is the good news of Easter. The good news of new life. The good news that carries us through our disappointments to a day of resurrection. And so may this same God bless us and keep us. May this same God's face shine on us with grace and mercy. And may this same God look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen. Let us close with our hymn. Christ is risen just as he said. 
Go in peace. Share the good news. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.